companies doing that, and I'm thinking, okay, this sounds like fires in the mind. And so if you've never read that book, it's a great book. It's a lot about what he was talking about with passion and um, looking at experts, what makes a person an expert, and it's almost the exact same steps, the passion with it. So there's my librarian spiel for the day. I'm, I'm there, I'm done. That's the what book. What was the name of the book? It's called Fires in the Mind. I knew somebody was going to ask me that. I'm thinking it's like Karen Cushman or something like that. It's red. It's orange cover. Has a kid on the front. He's kind of I know that. <laughs> I tell kids, don't come in and ask me for the blue book. But sometimes, you know, we can't remember. We can't remember. All right. Welcome to Growing Your Own PLN. Uh, my name is Angie Spann. I am from Rock Springs, Wyoming, which is way in the southwest corner. Um, had to get away from the National High School rodeo crowd, so I decided to come to Potsdam, uh, which is great and wonderful. Um, but uh, I am, like I said, the librarian. I'm actually called the Academic Learning Center Coordinator. I've got a big title, but it all boils down to librarian there. And I've been working there for about uh, 10 years. That was actually my high school that I graduated from. So I'm back home um, in my hometown, that lovely high school photo. Yeah, was from then. So um, hopefully everyone's in the right room. This is the room that you wanted to be in. All right. Um, this picture, I took just the other day. This is a table in our back room um, at the ALC. And every day, probably anywhere between about two to ten teachers sit at this table um, every day. And we talk about all sorts of things. Um, yes, we do grumble. We've probably solved every education problem in the world. I know we have um, sitting back there. And we talk about kids, but oftentimes we do talk about what's going on in classrooms. And we discuss new things, new ideas that we've come up with, maybe come across. And for some of the teachers, I know this is probably the only place that they sit down and talk about those things. Maybe they went to a conference, right? And they don't necessarily come back and tell the whole staff. They tell it in small groups. Okay? And so I have always been one, being a librarian, who always wants to go and get information. For me, this isn't enough. Right? But I want to ask you all, right? um, and I'm just going to ask instead of going here since our time's a little bit short, um, I was going to use a back channel thing called Today's Meet, and if you're interested in that, let me know, come talk to me afterwards, I can tell you what that is. But how do you learn or you grow professionally? How do you learn or grow professionally? What do you do? Think about it. What do you do? Network. And how do you network? Find colleagues that are in the same field and interest and inspired in, in different ways. Within your building or no, within your always. district? Not at no. all. Where? Outside of the learning communities, all the different learning communities in, in the area even. Okay, in an, in an area um, or maybe even like here at a conference, you network with a few people that are at conferences. All right, how else do you learn? PLCs. PLCs, um, are they again in your building? Yes. Yes, okay, so within a building, maybe a, a limited group, all right, with it. Yours could be expanded out a lot more, yeah, with it. All right, how else? Look for it on YouTube, Google it, or throw it out on Twitter and ask a question and see if someone responds. There you go, and you, you, you've got it right there, all right, with it. Pull it out from that building, all right? Pull it out from that table. All right, and that's what we're going to talk about today is ways in which you can do that and to build what is considered a personal learning community. I'm going to show you a video here. Hopefully it comes up. Let's see if I can make this full screen for you. Okay. What are those personal learning networks?
it can do for you uh, with a personal learning network. Now, I also refer to it as a professional learning network. Um, and the reason I do that is just simply because, for me, I kind of separate, I, I like to separate the two. My, I have personal learning networks, but they're about my scrapbooking and digital content and camping and taekwondo and things that I like to do with my family. Um, and then I have my professional ones, so I kind of keep it a little bit separate. Um, that's I use I use Twitter professionally, but I use Facebook personally. You know, so I kind of keep them separate. So I'm going to be referring to it more as a professional learning network, but you'll see a lot of people just call it plain personal learning network. Right? And one of probably the easiest ways to start building that personal learning network and taking it away from that back room or that uh, proverbial water cooler, so to speak, right, is to look at blogs. Um, anybody in here have a blog? Cool. <laughs> kind of, sort of, kind of want to start one. You have one, you're pretty, pretty active in it, all right, with it. All right, blogs, really, you don't necessarily have to start out blogging, all right, to join your personal learning network. First thing with blogs is to get out there and see what people are talking about. Because as I have out here, it's not just a diary for the world to see. A lot of people think blogs are just somebody putting out their own personal information out there and putting pictures and talking about what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Blogs can be that way. There are blogs out there that do that. But there are tons of blogs that people put out their ideas, their thoughts, what they're reading, what they're looking at, a conference they've attended, a session they've gone to. And what's nice about blogs is that people can comment on them. And you can start having that dialogue and having that conversation around what somebody has posted. Eventually, it's a good idea then to start your own and start bringing those conversations into you rather than always going out to them. And with blogs, one of the things that um, you want to do with blogs is not have to sit and go to them every day. Because you're going to find, once you start looking for blogs, and Google, Google actually has a blog search that specifically goes out and searches blogs. So if you want to know a blog on a specific topic, you can go to Google and go to their blog search, and you can go find blogs that are, that are um, of interest to you. And what you want to do is you're going to find there's tons of them out there. You're not going to spend all of your time going to each one to see when something's new or anything like that. And so the best thing to do is to get what's called a reader, a feed reader. And every blog has with it what is called an RSS feed. Does anybody know an RSS feed? Give me a definition. No? No? Real okay. simple, really simple. Right. Real simple syndication is what it means. And what it basically does is it takes that information that's in the blog, breaks it down into a very, very simple um, software type thing, the, the whole technical uh, thing behind it, and brings it in so a reader can read it and brings it to you. It may strip away some graphics. Um, it may strip away a few other things so that it comes in in a very simple form. And then you go to your reader and you can read that blog. Or you can see just a little blurb of it, a little tease, to see if you actually want to go out and read it. So today what I'd like you to do is we're going to get you set up on a reader, okay, so that you can start looking at blogs. And so I use Google Reader. Um, and I know a lot of people are like, I'm not trying to be a commercial for Google or anything like that. I used to use blog lines. Well, they shut down. So I went to Google Reader. Um, and there's others out there. But if everyone would go to Google, if you have an account, log into it. If you've not started on Google Reader, we'll get you started. If you do not have an account on Google Reader, right, go and create one. Just it's use, free? Is it through your Google account? Through your Google account? Yes, it's through a Google your a Google account. So if you already have a Google account, you've got a Gmail account or something like that, just sign into that account. Right? You will already automatically have Google Reader. You just may not use it. Now I see a lot of people in here who have iPads, iPods, different things like that. There are apps that you can get that once you have signed up for Google Reader or not signed up for Google Reader, but once you have your Google Reader going and you have some feeds in there, then you can go and there are apps available that you can download and it will actually bring your Google Reader feeds right into that app. So you don't necessarily have to go in and log in to Google Reader every single time all right, with it. And if you'd like to know those, um, I'd 
more than happy to let you know um, some of them that I have used. Anybody need help or are we going pretty good? Okay. You can even, believe it or not, um, you can get RSS feeds even for like Google searches. So if you do a search and you want to know when something new comes up every single time, you can actually have an RSS feed for that and bring it into your reader. It's kind of cool. Okay. What if you already have one in WordPress.com, let's say? WordPress? <laughs> <laughs> just as an example. Let me tell you, WordPress is actually just a, is a blog. Okay. This is not a blog uh, okay. producer. What this is, is this is taking the feeds from the blog yes. and pulling them into you. So instead of going out to each individual blog that you want to read, like um, I have probably about 80 feeds from different blogs. There's no way, and, and not to say that I even look at this on a weekly basis, or at least not daily. Weekly, I definitely look at it on a weekly basis. But if I had to go out to 80 different websites to go try and find that information, it would take a lot more time than bringing it in here. So you don't have an actual, you don't have your blog set up through Google? No, my blog is not, so I have a WordPress blog. Okay. That, that's where that's my, my, my blog, mm -hmm, that's totally separate. Right. Okay. So right. if I want to throw up on the page and talk about education, I can do that on my You can do that on your blog. blog. But let's say <laughs> I, I read your blog, uh -huh. okay, and maybe I don't have WordPress. I use something else to blog with. Because on WordPress, I can actually follow your blog because okay. we're both WordPress. Okay. All right, with that. But let's say I don't have, I don't have it. Okay. I want to follow your blog, but I don't want to have to go out every single day and check and see if you've okay, posted so something new. If I already have this RSS app, if I already have that feeding, is that the same? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so if you already have that, I'll be okay. fine. No, thank you. With this. <laughs> no, you're fine. You're fine. No, no, no questions at all. Okay. All right. So now what you should have. We got a question out of one. When you log into. start making those those folders with that to bring these in and when I click on any of these for example I have this one that's called education recoded um, the big thing here is the two articles that they have updated and as you can see they were quite a big spread June 23rd July 10th a couple weeks apart <coughs> right? I could be checking every day to see if they have something new instead I can just look here and know that it's that it's there and that they have something new so the big thing is one that is one block, yes, yes, all right, on there. So I brought that feed into me um, because I like what they have to say and I want to read what they have to say with that instead of going out to it. Um, as I said, I mean, if you look here, I've got under book reviews, these are all the blogs that I look at for book reviews. I'm not gonna go out to those every single day with it. Yes? You're fine. It automatically, when they post something, Exactly, exactly. And that's the nice thing about having that reader because blogs can be very powerful in learning new information and um, so it's nice to have it come to you with it. All right. So I have listed up here 
right? Um, just four of the blogs that I follow that are pretty frequent followers, or are pretty frequent bloggers on here. Um, if you would like to go to, in, to um, this very first one up here, Crazy Teaching by Terry Englebright. And let's pull in her feed. But it's just um, www.crazyteacherlady.com. You're going to give us more? Yes. Yes. I actually have a, um, I've got those four, and I actually have a, um, at the end, I'm going to give you a, my wiki site where I have this slide presentation as well as more examples. Okay. And so, if you want even more <laughs> than what's listed on there, you're more than welcome to contact me because as you can see, I got like 80 of them. Now, yes. I see here it says RSS feed. Bingo. Can I click on that and it will add it to my Google Reader? We will, we're going to add it there. Yes. Let me show you. That's just what I was going to do, was show you how to do that. As she said, you'll see right up here, yeah. you'll have the RSS feed, and that's what we want to look for. Right? Sometimes you'll have, it'll say RSS um, subscribe, or it'll just say subscribe. Usually it will, usually it will have this symbol. All right, that's pretty much a universal symbol for an RSS feed. All right, sometimes it may just have a little area that says subscribe All right, with it. So when you click on that, and of course, I picked the one that's not working. No, what you can do if this comes up, great example, sometimes it will take you directly there and it will ask you what you want to use and it'll give you a whole list. It could give you Yahoo. It'll give you Google Reader. It'll give you, I think, Newsvine and a whole bunch of other ones. You could just pick Google Reader, and then it'll ask you um, where to place it. If it comes up like this, don't panic and think, oh, I can't get this feed. Right? What you'll want to do is right up here at the top, copy the URL right up here. And we'll do this manually. And in your Google Reader, you should have an area that says subscribe or add subscription. Click on that and then paste the URL into that and go add. And it should bring it in. It should appear in the left hand side. Now, on this, if, for example, I wanted to look at this flipping school. Now, I know mine's going to look just a little bit different. Those of you that are also on laptops, it's going to look similar to mine. You on iPads, it's going to look probably a little bit different. Um, but if you were to click on one of the titles, this one actually brings in the whole article. Here it is right here. I don't even have to go out to the blog if I don't want to. Now, if I want to comment, if I want to add a comment, then I would need to actually, I could click on the title in here and I could actually go to the blog and I could make a comment with it. If not, if I just want to read it, I can just read it. Okay. Yes. This is where I'm at when I hit the RSS reader. You're good. So you should be.
Um, I have someone over here that it's pulling up. It's actually not pulling into their Google Reader. It's pulling up a .Mac Reader. Um, and that must be, I don't know if you have a Doc Mac, Mac account or, or not or anything. So what you want to do, if you go back to that Google Reader tab, and it should say add subscription or subscribe, <laughs> click on subscribe and then type in this URL, crazyteacherlady.com slash seven slash B. Okay. Okay. See, I don't have, I don't have a Doc Mac account, so I didn't know anything. It's a reader automatic. Learn something new every day. I did. And I was fine. See, I did the more I said speed. Let's see, instead of that, and then I did the first thing. Okay. This will depend on the reader settings. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. These are just the blogs. Um, David Warlick um, is another one that I like to read. And The Committed Sardine, um, it's now actually Fluency 21st or 21st Century Fluency. That one is various writers, but they do a lot of different topics on education, and those are good ones as well. As I said, I'm going to show you at the end uh, a site that you can go to that's going to have listed more on there. Yes. So I'm on the crazy teaching right now. Mm -hmm. how, how, would I, how would I take this and put it as somebody that I would follow then? Like on, on Twitter or uh, like to be able to access it? Different on the iPad. 
All right, just a little bit because see, I have this thing right here that says like um, feed settings. I have um, this over here that I can go in and I can delete. All right, with it, I believe I can. Let's see, I can't right click on it. Um, so it's it acts a little bit differently. You can, but I could open it up. Yes. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I have actually my feeds. I have my feeds coming in on my phone, on my computer, on my iPad. Um, not on this, but yeah. I have them coming in all over. And it, and it updates. So if I read it in one place and I get on my computer the next day, it's going to show that my numbers have gone down because I've already read those. Okay, yeah. So it all syncs wherever you are. Okay. <laughs> two M's and two D's. So. The next thing to use, all right, is Twitter. Okay, this is the next big step. Okay, how many of you Twitter now? Del dealt with it. Okay, how many of you? Okay, how many of you actively Twitter? Let's put it that way. Okay, awesome. How many of you have an account but you're not too sure what to do with it? Yeah, okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so Twitter, Twitter. Um, is actually probably one of the most powerful professional learning networks out there, really, um, if you start harnessing it well. And um, it's not about telling the world your every move. I have, a, I have friends that go, oh, God, I don't want to get on Twitter because then I'm going to learn when someone goes to the bathroom or something. I'm like, no, 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 no. And they're like, I don't want to follow celebs. That's what the kids do. Yeah. Don't, no, 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 no. I have no celebs. All right? In fact, I just found out the other day that my son actually is on Twitter. I didn't even know he was on Twitter All right, with it. And he follows his bands. I'm like, okay, whatever, all right, with this. But Twitter is um, very, very powerful, all right? Oh, I'll get to that in just a minute, okay? So let's go ahead and get on Twitter, all right? Go ahead and go to www.twitter.com, or if you have the app, all right? Um, Which is better? I'm going to ask you to go online for it okay. instead of doing the app. Um, it's going to be just a little bit different um, because the app, different places to go to search for things, okay, with it. Twitter allows you to keep up with tons of different people across the world, all right? Blogs can take it on a world level. This really takes it on a world level, all right, with Twitter, because you can get people in every corner of the globe. Everybody's on Twitter. I have people that I follow that are in Spain in um, Canada, in Norway, in England, uh, you know, all over in, in uh, oh, I can't, I can't remember where he is. <laughs> Come to think of it, I think he's like in Thailand or something like that, that you follow. And what's nice about Twitter, again, it can be that quick look to see if you want it or you don't, all right, on there. With Twitter, okay, a tweet consists of very different things, okay? A tweet, as you may or may not know, you only have 140 characters. So you don't have a lot of room to go rambling on. Okay? And so what someone will usually do is they'll put their short part, they may have a feed, all right, or they may have, excuse me, not a feed, they may have a URL that they plug in there. All right? They may also have on there somebody that they have um, mentioned. Okay, this is the little at right here, and when you sign up and you register at Twitter, if you don't know already, the little at symbol comes before your username. Okay, so this one is at Wendy's, right? and what that means, that's a mention. Okay, if somebody puts that at symbol in there and puts your, your username after that, then they have mentioned you, and you will get feedback as to somebody, oh, hey, somebody's mentioned you. So they're not, right, with it. it's not like they're talking at you. <laughs> Not necessarily. They can with that. Mm -hmm. Yes, they can if they want to make it public. If they want everybody to know that they're talking to you, um, or it could just be a simple case of they. Um, for example, at the keynote this morning, um, I quoted some of something that, that Brad had said, and I did the at Brad, so everyone knew that that's who was the person that said it. He'll see that he was mentioned in it and stuff, and you can kind of take or leave those. You can also direct message people and make it more of a private conversation if you want to right, with that. There's also another big thing to a Twitter um, tweet is the hashtag. Right? 
a hashtag, think of it as kind of like a subject marking for that feed. Someone has said that people in this category, if you follow that hashtag, and I'll show you how to do that here in a minute, right, that this would be something of interest to you. Right? So the people here, Ed Reach TVC, if you go in and you want to look at everything that's labeled with that hashtag, like I said, it's kind of like a subject or a tag right, with it, then you can see everything that has been marked with that hashtag. And as you can see, it's in red, so I can actually click on it even from here and see. Now, you're kind of going, oh, God, I don't know if I want to send tweets out yet. I'm not too sure. And I'm going to show you a place where there's some great hashtags for education here in just a minute. All right, with that, one of the things that I would suggest to get started with Twitter is to search these hashtags. Right? And you can do that right up here. You can search for people, but you can also search for hashtags right up here. So for example, if I were to take and I wanted to search for the hashtag Podstock, let's see what people are saying about Podstock. I put in that hashtag and then I type out Podstock. And when I hit return, you'll see all of the tweets right here that come up for Podstock. I can actually take and I can save this if I wanted to. And so anytime anything came up new in there, I would see what it is with it. So I can save that if I wanted to, all right, right underneath here, and I can save that search. So if all I wanted to do is go in and I wanted to see what people, let me just show you here really quick, what people are saying, say, about Save to search, and you can see okay, anything like I have PBL project based learning because our school is really starting to get into it. So, I want to see what tweets come out on project based learning. So, I can do that search, I can save it, and I can go and look, and it'll automatically update every time there's something new on there with it. If you, you want your followers, the people who follow you, because when you go out and you start following people, they're going to follow you back. All right? That doesn't mean, still doesn't mean you have to put stuff out every day, all the time. No. All right, with that. But they will get that information. But you might also want to spread it out throughout all the people. So you want to hashtag it. Right? And the more you hashtag things, the more people will see it okay, with there. And so, Again, this could be a big step for some people. Start small. You don't have to go in and start tweeting a whole bunch of stuff and put the hashtag or anything like that. All right? Maybe start off just tweeting a few things here at Podstock, putting that hashtag out there all right, with it to get used to it so that you know with it. But there is a site, right? and especially for um, educational hashtags and, of course, right off the top of my head. I can't remember what the URL is. Uh, but Cyberary Man, who is one of the people that I have recommended for you to follow, and I'll pull up that list here in a minute so you can kind of start following people as well, right, has put together this great list of hashtags. Um, it is awesome. And the URL is um, cyberryman.com. Let's see if I can bring that up. <coughs>
Now, by all means, this isn't the only list out there, but this is a great composite list. He's really put together a great list. And as you can see, he's even listed some other places you can go to with this. He also has a good list of people to follow. He has it broken down yes. by category. So if you're a preschool teacher, it has a list say, of them. Yes. If you're an, a superintendent, he has a list of people there, and that's helpful. I'm trying to think if I, he has this on here. I don't think he has a, I don't think he has a link from it on here. But you know what? I will find that link and I'll put it on my. I have it. Do you have it? Well, okay. I've got to find it. Okay. Go ahead and find it, and I'll go ahead and go through this. All right. And when you find it, just signal me. Okay, on here. So educational hashtags, and as I, I'm just going to quick scroll through this really quick, and then I'll come back. You can see there are a lot of them. All right, with that. But if you go through and you kind of, he's got them down here in in, in alphabetical order, and, and then up here. Um, just kind of more like a big, the big ones right, on here. But you'll see that there's something almost for everybody. Um, there's literacy, there's music, there's um, new teacher chat. One that I use a lot is um, TL chat, which is teacher librarian chat, or even ed chat, which is education chat right, with it. And so, or there's, I think there's one even that's like ed, just education, period, right, or learning. And so there's all these different ones that you can explore and see what people are talking about. A lot of this I have, <laughs> I'm, I'm probably really bad. I send out emails to my teachers um, with new sites or hey, check this out or go look at this or you know, do this or something like that. And I know they're probably like, just stop. <laughs> Where I get a lot of them is my blogs and my Twitter. If I find out something new, if I have a new app, if I have new, that's usually where I find it. Right, it's right there. So um, those are the two big ones with this. So I would suggest going through, looking at this, <coughs> seeing what it is. He has some information too right here about uh, making hashtags a little bit friendly, why you want to use them, how you want to use them. Some of these, for example, tweet chat, tweet deck, tweet grid, um, if you want to follow a chat, they sometimes have what are called Twitter chats. Someone will start it at a certain time. And that's usually where they, where they will use ed chat, or, and they will um, maybe use another hashtag that does it. And what it basically is, is it's a conversation. People are asking questions, throwing ideas out, and it's usually maybe only about an hour long, and they have a post of time, and people are just talking about conversations. And you can follow those, Oftentimes, what people will do is instead of making you go to Twitter and follow them, they will put them on, say, like a start like uh, Storyfy, um, which is a site, and they may categorize them there the whole chat right there in Storyfy, so you can sit and read it. So if there's a you know a, a chat that you want to do but you don't necessarily want to, but you want to see the results of it or you don't have time, you know it's midnight at night where you are and it's only five o'clock where they start. Right, with it, then you can take and you can even maybe message them and say, do you have this archive someplace? Right, and you can do that. So you have all that on there. Okay. So on Twitter, right, you have followers and you have people that you are following. Right? And some people that you may want to start following, um, I have up here and I apologize, it's so small. Um, these are people that probably I learn from at least maybe on a weekly basis. Right. I will take and um, I have this list again posted on that on that wiki along with some others on here. All right, um, but here I have um, Dwight Carter. Right, is fantastic. He's a principal. Twe uh, tweets about all sorts of stuff. Tom Whitby at Tom Whitby. This is one definitely I would take and follow. He's fantastic. Um, always has all sorts of different ideas, and he also does a lot of ed chats. Okay. He is very, very good. So at Tom Whitby, W H I T B Y. Um, uh, Steve Anderson, Stephen W. Anderson, Web 20 Classroom. It should be like Web 2.0, but can't put it. Yeah. All right. So Web 20 Classroom. He's another one, probably on a daily basis. 
Uh, the Cyberry Man, Jerry Bloomgarten, is Cyberry Man 1. He's another one I would recommend. And then, as I said, there's more. Follow each other. My principal and I follow each other. He was very shocked when ISTE came around and I didn't have any tweets. He said, where are you? I'm not at ISTE. We also have, for our school, we actually have a hashtag for our school, and we will tweet out information about our school. Right? So that's something that you could do as well. Right? Talk about those PLCs in your building. You can also expand it. You can also take it in and just have it in there if you want them to follow with this. Um, I don't know if you keep seeing this. I mean, I've had nine, t nine new tweets since the last time I was there, like one, two minutes. Right? Twitter can get overwhelming when you have a lot. That's why those searches are so nice right, with it and those saved searches. And also that hashtag search. That's why I basically showed you just that portion of it. Now I've only got a few more minutes here, so I'm just going to kind of talk. Uh, this slideshow, as I said, is on that wiki page. Um, I don't have audio to it yet, but I'm going to get there. Um, so it has a little bit of description to it as well. Right? Um, Digo, if you've never been to Digo, Digo is social bookmarking. This is another way that you can connect with people. And what that means is it basically is taking those sites that you want to remember, that like maybe you bookmark on your computer, and it's putting it out onto the web where anyone can see it if you want to. You can also make them private, right? and you can connect with people. Um, for example, at my school, I connect with a certain math teacher on Digo. And so every time I pull up something that's math, she knows about it before I email it out to everybody else. Right? And I see what she pulls in, too. So I could say, hey, have you talked to you know, so-and-so about, you know, if another teacher comes in and asks me about something, I can say, oh, so-and-so has a great site. Why don't you go talk to them right, with it? And so Digo's great. What I also <coughs> like about Digo is you can put sticky notes on a website. And if you make that website public, the people then, if they go to your site, they will see the little sticky note and see what you've said. <coughs> and you can even highlight sections. Now, I'm no longer in the classroom, and I wish I had more teachers that would do this um, with Digo. This is a great one for research with kids. Right? Because then they could go through and they could bookmark what they've researched especially if they're doing it in groups, and they can see each other's highlights. They can see each other's notes. They can see it. It's a great, great one for research. Okay. Digo, you can also join groups. I'm in a teacher librarian group, and so anytime anybody bookmarks something in that teacher librarian group, I get to see it. Again, I find out more places for it. So Digo is great. There's also collaborative groups. And what these are is these are basically um, areas similar to Twitter. They have almost everything enclosed. They'll post videos, they'll post pictures, they'll have their own discussions, their own groups. Right? But they are great as well. Tom Whitby, who I talked about on Twitter, has this one right here, the Educators PLN, Personal Learning Network. All right? This is a great one All right, to start off and look at collaborative groups. Okay, so. Yes, you do have to have an account. To get that, Sorry. that one that you just um, showed This us. one? Yes, you do have to have an account. They're both free. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Listen, start small if you need to. Don't go to these if you don't want to go there. Okay. <laughs> and then there's curation sites. I'm going to go ahead and just skip to this one. I'm not even going to get to curation sites. Don't worry about it. All right, with it. I'll focus more. I'll talk about the curation sites more on the, on the video. But here is the wiki spaces that you can go to right, that is going to have not only this presentation, right, but it'll also have longer lists of blogs, of Twitter people to follow. I'm going to step back just slightly on Twitter. When you follow somebody and you start to like what you see, Go and look and see who they follow and who follow them. 
because more than likely, they're going to be kind of like-minded people and they're going to have more information. That's how you start getting people to follow on Twitter. Okay? Because you can see, once you follow somebody, you can see who follows them and who they follow. So you definitely see that. If you want, I'm on Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. I'm at Moyo Tigger. If you get on Digo, um, on Digo, I'm Mo Libras. Okay. Uh, if you would like to send me an uh, email, and have any questions, anything like that, please go ahead and send me an email. I just ask that in the subject you put Podstock. Reason being is it probably will hit my spam filter, and while I check my spam filter, um, if I don't see what it's from or anything like that, I may not recognize the email address and bring it on in so that I can read it. <coughs> but definitely. Any questions? Yes, did you have that? It is cyberman.com slash pin stars. That, that's where all of those... Is it P-I-N? Yeah. Dot HTML or dot... HTML. Oh. Got an E in HTML. Thank you. Fast fingers. Come on. What did I not do right? P I N S T A R S? Yep. Dot HTML. Yep. <clears throat> that is correct. of his chats right here when they're scheduled. He tweets a lot. That's that's if you're at it now. Right here? Okay. Yeah, on down. Then oh, right here. Yeah. See, like there's ah, English here we go. group or... Yeah, here is his... Yeah. There it is. Okay, right here. So he has it listed down right here. Okay. I will get this website or that one that you do see, I'll go ahead and get that on that wiki site as well. I'll get it here in just the next few minutes so that um, on this site so that you have that as well. Thank you very much for that. I knew he'd put it out there. I just hadn't got there yet. Well, I got it at ISTE. So uh, there you go. Because I'm go. a newbie on Twitter. So uh -huh. I yeah. figure out who to follow. <laughs> You want whoever you can. <laughs> and like I said, once you follow some, see who they follow and their followers. That's a good way too. Any questions? If we just got a couple more minutes and stuff. Thank you very much for attending. I hope you've learned a lot. Oh, and I said, if you have any questions, thank you.